Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack with a special Thanksgiving edition of our Threat Snapshot series. Hopefully you have the day off and are spending it with friends, family, and loved ones, but we still wanted to keep you up to date on the latest cyber threats. This blog post was put out last year around this time by CISA, but it really could apply every year. It's just a reminder to stay vigilant against cyber threats around this time of year, particularly because security operations centers are going to be short-staffed with people on PTO, People are going to be distracted thinking about holiday plans and other things. And in particular, ransomware and a lot of other attacks are very much target of opportunity. So this is the perfect time of year for these sort of attacks to occur, and especially when people have their guard down. So just a reminder to stay vigilant. Um, looking at a couple examples and what we originally wanted to feature for our threat snapshot was the Robinhood ransomware. Uh, back in 2020, and again, this would be a throwback, uh, that ransomware took down the Baltimore County schools uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, this ransomware also had a pretty notorious run affecting the city of Baltimore as well back in 2019. And you know, while the ransomware itself was pretty small, again, less than $80,000 in Bitcoin at the time, um, it cost the city $18 million in recovery and cleanup services. So these ransomware attacks can be very devastating and they're always constantly in the news. There's always new ransomware threats you know, to defend against. And in particular, what we're going to feature today is the Hive ransomware. So this alert was put out last week by CISA. Um, this has been going around quite a bit in the United States and other countries. Again, they are targeting lots of different sectors, um, including government, communications, IT, healthcare. A lot of times, again, these are going to be targets of opportunity. So they're getting in with, you know, valid credentials, um, using RDP or VPNs or other access protocols to get into your network. Um, sometimes they can bypass MFA. Um, sometimes they can uh, exploit, you know, outdated servers and services. Particularly, they've used a lot of the exchange server vulnerabilities that have been going around and that we've also talked about in some past snapshots. Um, so making sure that you're, you know, keeping those things patched and up to date if you're hosting those on-prem. Um, lot, not a lot of details here in this threat intelligence about what's in the middle. Um, obviously, you know, getting initial access or, you know, using a phishing attack, those are pretty well known. But how do they go from that initial access to actually deploying the ransomware isn't really described here. So really this threat snapshot, we're gonna focus more on the ransomware itself, um, some of its techniques and how you could prevent that stage of the attack. So pivoting over here to snap attack, we've got the Hive ransomware threat. Um, you can definitely take a look at this. Um, I'm going to start the video and we'll talk through what's going on. Um, you can see here it was ran um, one time uh, just without any command line arguments and you need to provide a username and password um, this isn't actually for the domain or for a workstation itself. This is what credentials it's going to need for you to log in to um, pay your ransom and recover your files. So this is something the attacker would put in. Um, this ransomware is pretty quick. Um, you can see quite a bit of activity here after it started. You can see the ransomware note is already popped up. Again, with that uh, username and password that we put here, um, redirecting you to a Tor Onion site where you could, again, pay that ransom. Um, quite a bit of activity happened on the host. We also have, you know, several detection opportunities here. Uh, I'm going to pivot over to the process graph because, again, this ransomware, using a lot of those living off the land techniques, um, it shows really well. So we have the ransomware binary itself here. Um, you can see the hash. This was downloaded from, you know, VirusTotal, but you could grab it easily from other malware repositories. And there's quite a few things that it's going to do before it encrypts the files. So um, talked about this in other, you know, ransomware snapshots, um, deleting volume shadow copies with VSS admin. Again, the ransomware uh, attackers are very much motivated to make sure you pay the ransom. So they're going to want to delete any sort of backups or file archives or any ways uh, that they can inhibit system recovery. So this is always a pretty good indicator. Um, there are other ways of clearing the volume shadow copies, which again, they're going to do so kind of like you have defense in depth, they have um, offense in depth here. So they're gonna also use uh, WMIC to delete volume shadow copies. Uh, they're gonna run WB admin to delete um, some of the backup catalogs. They're also going to use BCD edit to inhibit recovery here. So quite a few different opportunities for detection and again, quite a few ways that they are going to try and you know destroy as much as they can of that data 
as well as, again, this ransomware vendor in particular, they exfiltrate your data too. So it's that double extortion mechanism, which makes it particularly deadly. So again, how would I hunt for this? How would I detect it? Ideally, you're able to do this earlier in the kill chain, um, but if you're only looking at the ransomware itself, um, hopefully you have an endpoint detection or response tool like a, a CrowdStrike or Sentinel-1, and you have the ability to create additional rules that you can put into more of a proactive stance. So deleting volume shadow copies, or again, modifying the boot configuration with BCD edit, these aren't typical commands that you're going to see day to day in an operation or day to day in like an enterprise environment. So um, these sort of activities, if you see any process that's running them, um, you should be able to kill that process um, and stop that. So that would be an effective way to, you know, inhibit ransomware and, you know, stop that dead in its tracks. So we do have detections around these that you could certainly deploy to these tools again, alert you in the event that there is a ransomware infection, but ideally if you can take a more proactive stance to prevent those. Um, those would definitely be some tactics. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's gonna be our snapshot for today. Hope everyone is enjoying their Thanksgiving. Have a safe holiday, and we will see you next week with Bloodhound.